Hello everyone, I'm Melissa Brush and I'm here um, with some fellow community members. I myself am a community member uh, for the city of Sheboygan and we're here on behalf of Save the Field of Dreams and um, I want to welcome everyone here and we're going to talk about some information that we think our fellow community members should know about what's going on with the Field of Dreams. I'm Herb Tyler. And I'm Juan Perez. I'm Renee Roosh. <coughs> and I'm Tammy Rob. So we're going to start off with a little bit about our background, just uh, for those of you that don't know how this whole thing started. Um, and Renee's going to going to kick us off. All right. Thank you, Melissa. So at the beginning of February, we received a letter from Aurora indicating that they were going to make some changes to sports athletic facilities and increase health awareness or something regarding health and wellness in our community. And it was a very vague letter. We basically thought, well, they'll make a donation or something, and we kind of disregarded that. Come to find out that they were intending to sell the Field of Dreams or purchasing the Field of Dreams from the Sheboygan Area School District. Um, Aurora was. Aurora right? was, yes, thank you. February 9th, we had our community meeting with um, Aurora, the city, and the school board, and they unveiled their plans regarding this with the hope to sell the land to Aurora the very next evening at the school board meeting. Right. And after listening to us and we attended the school board meeting, they delayed the vote by two weeks. Yeah. So basically we got the letter, uh, many of us Wednesday, Thursday, about three days before, about three days before some on Saturday, some not at all. Um, I think it was less than 100 uh, people. They said they sent it out to 200, but I... A lot of people in the neighborhood didn't get it, but it was about right. two lines and basically show up on Monday um, after we, we received it on Friday or Saturday, mm -hmm. show up on Monday at six o'clock and most of us weren't going to show up. Mine, I had to dig out of the garbage. It had coffee grounds <laughs> on it. Yeah. Um, you know, but then uh, we heard word through the grapevine um, that they were going to sell the Field of Dreams and, and that is public property. That is school district property. That is taxpayer property. Um, and we, we just felt more than a one day notice uh, was important. Um, and we, we feel that like this is, and I think you wanted to mention Renee, that this is a community issue. Yes, exactly. It is a community issue. Um, Field of Dreams is the most utilized park in the city of Sheboygan. At least one of them. One of them, you know, for whether it's soccer, baseball, um, kite flying, picnics. We have the playground there. The kids the deer. play. The deer, <laughs> yes. We have children that play kickball there that have pickup games for football. So it's a very widely used facility. It was um, actually being used, uh, the, I saw lots of high school uh, girls playing soccer there yesterday. Yeah, that's the high school field for soccer practice. Um, cross country also practices there for North High School. Um, but it is a community issue. It's not just a neighborhood issue. Um, when we did um, Sheridan Park became a community issue when the police department wanted to build their when new, the city, yeah. you know, I'm sorry, when the city wanted to build there. And it was also a community issue when they wanted to pave Taylor Drive through Maywood. So this is a community issue. This is um, a landmark piece of property in our city that they want to take away and build. And it is designated as a, as a park on the city master plan. Sure, sure it is. But I think it's also important to note, how did we get to that point? To mm -hmm. the point where they made an official announcement, the city, the school, and Aurora, and then gave us 24 hours. Within 24 hours, they're going to vote to vote it. I mean, they were going to vote to sell it. And we got to that point by having the school board yes. for over a year meet in secret closed sessions discussing the putting together a comprehensive plan strategy to sell the field of dreams and why would they take so much time behind closed doors well, one can only wonder but if you look back mm -hmm. and i think uh, melissa mentioned sheboygan has a history of protecting its parks and they knew or should have known that people were going to be that they were going to be met with a lot of heavy resistance mm -hmm. so the first thing they do is we we will meet in, pr in private and secret in closed session for over a year i think it dates back to february of 2013 yes. which is a long time so they had plenty of time to put together this comprehensive plan plot and scheme and then throw it in your face and we're going to vote and sell it that's how we got here and people yeah. need to understand that the, the school board really, really uh, led down the public. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, they did. Well, and <clears throat> what was disturbing to me uh, as a citizen is they had an input meeting, at least they called it an input meeting, but 
decisions had already been made by the board members. So their job was to take some heat, let it roll off like water off a duck, and then vote. Uh, they did have the vote on February 24th, and it was unanimous. Uh, there had been a meeting on the 19th at Cooper School and some public input on the 24th at North High School before the vote. But that was basically just, uh, just for show. Uh, there wasn't any serious input that might have changed anyone's mind or, or been able to stop the process, at least with the Board of Education. And I know when we attended on February 10th to the school board meeting, the day after it was revealed to the public, which was embargoed uh, on the 9th until 1.30 p.m. I mean, it didn't even go in the morning paper. Um, but I know when we attended the school board meeting, um, the school board, some of the school board members said, "No, we're going to vote now. We don't. We're not going to. We're not going to stop this and listen to the public." And fortunately, uh, one of the school board members piped up and said, "No, I think we need to listen to the public. We should delay this vote." So they did delay for two weeks. But like you said, it felt more like they were. <laughs> and, and a school board member did say that they were told to have their mind made up by the February 10th meeting. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So our input didn't matter. Yeah, so that is how we got here. <laughs> uh, and, and four weeks later, we're here. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, Aurora keeps stating there is just nowhere else to build. I mean, they have to build over one of our parks, and in particular, the Field of Dreams. Um, and I'll admit, it is a beautiful, it is a beautiful place, a safe neighborhood, um, you know, right across from their competitor, um, which seems to be one of their strategies in their building. But let's talk about this this want that they have. It really isn't a need because there's lots of properties and lots of areas to for them to develop, but let's talk about this want. Who wants to kick us off? Well, maybe Tammy. Maybe sure. Tammy. Well, we've, we have done some research over the past couple of years, um, and with that, we have identified 15 sites that would be appropriate at the beginning of this process. It was 15 sites um, on the north side, central, as well as south side of Sheboygan. Since that time, there's been things that have evolved, like the mm -hmm. buyers buying buying the mall, right. so on and so forth, mm -hmm. which is great. I'm glad that Sheboygan is growing and expanding, and we want Aurora to grow and expand within the city limits as well. Just not How, on a park. Just not on our <laughs> field of dreams, right. So, um, you know, th there are 15 other sites um, throughout Sheboygan. Um, the one thing that I think is most important is to talk about the three locations, the three parcels that Aurora already has purchased. Um, there are three places um, on the south side of Sheboygan, um, where they have purchased land quite a few years ago. Um, in addition to some research, uh, the Field of Dreams was actually site number six that Aurora wanted to purchase. So that's how they purchased the other three, and now they want to purchase Field of Dreams. So when we have approached Aurora on why they want the Field of Dreams, why are you, do you not want to buy number six on your list, and they have not come back with an answer. Um, they can't explain why they even bought the other three parcels and haven't built on it. So, um, you know, if a company this size just wants to go out and purchase land to stop competitors or for future expansion, that's fine. I think that should be shared, not maybe with us as well as with the city of Sheboygan. Okay. So, um, and one of the other things too that a trend that has been happening not only in Sheboygan but other cities is that it makes sense for, Shib or for Aurora Clinic or for the Aurora medical complex that they want to build to build on the south side. You see a duplication of services in Sheboygan just because of the way we are expanding. You see Culver's on the north side, south side. You see Walmart, north side, south side. Restaurants, north side, south side. Right. So to cluster everything and put them in the middle of the city and purchase the Field of Dreams just doesn't make sense. Years ago, the healthcare community, that's what they did. Um, examples would be like Madison, um, some other larger cities where they have a cluster of services, and to my understanding, that's what they're trying to do with purchasing the Field of Dreams. But However, they don't share medical doctors anymore. They don't I mean, it share. used to be years ago you'd share medical doctors. Now it'd just be a duplication of services. Correct. It'd be duplication of services and a cluster of services all together, which just doesn't make sense with the Sheboygan model. So I think really building on the north side or south side would be most effective, you know, for Aurora to take a, a better look at that and to um, build on the current land that they already purchased on the south well, side. Well, just making themselves accessible mm -hmm. to Sheboygan County. I mean, it is an outpatient surgery center, um, they're, they're saying, with uh, mm -hmm. an office building. Well, there's an outpatient surgery center, just kitty corner, 
um, from there and okay. why they need that much property or say they need that much property when they're only using less than 40% of the land. And I looked at the outpatient surgery center for St. Nicholas that's right across the corner. It's on less than two acres of land, mm -hmm. 60 parking spots. Now, why does Aurora need 589 parking spots for an outpatient surgery center and using less than 40% of the land? Correct. Well, it's, it's pretty obvious that they have plans much greater than just a surgery center. They're just not willing to share well, those plans. Well, they're saying they don't. Although, well, at the meeting <laughs> at Praise Fellowship on February 9th, uh, it was asked of Dave Grabner if there is a long-range plan. No, there isn't. <coughs> uh, do you have any other plans for the property? No, we don't. Well, since then, we've learned that they do, in fact, have a plan to put a hospital there. Uh, and that's another duplication. Another duplication, and that would be to replace the one on 7th Street right now. And the, uh, I think the city planners ought to have that kind of information, ought to know before they make decisions what is your plan, what are you, how are you going to use the other properties, is there going to be a cardiac hospital, are you going to put in a, a residential a psychiatric unit, a mental health unit, uh, are you going to you know, put in an orthopedic uh, center, what are your, your plans overall, because if they own those properties obviously have plans, they're just not sharing them with the people. The reason they're doing it the way they, they're doing it is very simple. If they showed plans to put an office complex or an office building and the same day surgery center on that site along with a freestanding standalone hospital, it would have met with way more resistance than it has already. Mm -hmm. But once they own the land and it's rezoned and they've got that built, now they can add the hospital and close the one on 7th mm -hmm. Street. And that's unquestionably in their plans. Well, and, you know, someone has said, you know, well, it's just going across the street, the park's just going across the street. but. You know, when's it going to be before the school district again is hemorrhaging money and has been since 2009 as far back as the budgets can see and we haven't mm -hmm. fixed that budget and we're worse shape than we are uh, today um, that they're not going to sell the East parcel to them too and before you know it they'll have that as well if they weren't already planning to do that. Mm -hmm. I find it interesting <clears throat> that they claim that we're just moving the park across the street. Well, you can't, when do you just move a park? You know, that just doesn't even make sense. Um, you know, you, you're taking 35 acres of current green space and you're going to replace it with 17 acres. That's half the amount. That does not make sense. It doesn't compute. You're setting a terrible precedent for the city if you allow this to happen, saying our parks are for sale saying, you know, nothing is sacred, green space does not matter. As soon as, you know, another corporation needs land, well, we'll just sell Cleveland Park. We'll send, we'll sell End Park. You know, there's plenty of property out there that have a lush green space. You know, what happens to Evergreen, Maywood? I mean, when does it stop? When does it end? Well, they're, they're justifying it based on the tax revenue. Uh, their proposal said that they're estimating $200,000 a year in taxes. People have to understand, our aldermen and the citizens of Sheboygan, that they're going to build somewhere in Sheboygan. You already uh, said that. They, they are going to build somewhere. So that tax revenue is going to be there no matter what. And those jobs created. And those jobs, jobs that are going to be created will be there no matter what. So it's very difficult, given that, to, to justify what they're doing on a city park or a school district park. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of fishy stuff going on. I think Tammy alluded to it. Why would Aurora want to destroy the Field of Dreams? Is it because they want mm -hmm. to eliminate competition or what is it? But if we go back to when the school board was for over a year negotiating closed session in secret, they actually went out and got three separate appraisals for that property. Mm -hmm. One appraisal was for 1.5 million. Mm -hmm. One appraisal was for 1. Point, I believe 275. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was uh, for two, two million two hundred seventy-five. Well, Aurora paid them more yeah. than mm -hmm. the actual mm -hmm. appraisal. So that that by itself tells us that there's something more going on than just that and what is going on is going on between the school district and Aurora. Yeah. I mean these people are in cahoots. <clears throat> They've been cahooting for over a year and nobody seems to, to, to know because they, they have secretly kept it away from us. Mm -hmm. They've done shafted us quite frankly. Yeah mm -hmm. and they do um, you know have over 100 acres just south of the Boots and Farm. Mm -hmm. They're on uh, uh, south of the Chevy dealership there on South Business Drive. So, you know, I don't know why. If the, Maybe that's their plan B if this all falls through. And here's the other thing. When I think it all Debbie falls. pointed it out earlier that th this particular, the, the Field of Dreams is worth two million, two point two seven five million. They offer two and a half million. But it turns out that the east side, which is last land, is worth 
over two and a half million. Yeah. So how does that come into play? So somebody's playing with numbers to our detriment, yeah. to the public's mm -hmm. detriment, and that that to me is incredibly wrong, and it's just it's it's beyond beyond me why they would do that. Something's going on, and that east parcel has contamination, and no one has determined who's going to clean that up and who's going to get rid and of it's that. Still assessed at two point five million dollars with the contamination, right. and, and five, yes. five acres of wetlands, and the wetlands. And yes, the wetlands. five acres of wetlands, and, and I've seen the the um, drawings for the the fields that they want to put over there: two ball, baseball diamonds, a parking lot, a restroom, uh, two soccer fields, and I'm just telling. You, you're going to have to get in your canoe to get your soccer yes. ball back, or you're going to have to run across it the street to get your baseball right up because to the it, is, it is not going to fit. A, right. And according to the Imong Association, um, they had shared that those wetlands have been growing they and grow. expanding, mm -hmm. so they're not able to grow their gardens on on the plots that they actually rent back from the city. So, um, so that's a concern not only for us but for them as well. Well, let's go ahead and share the cost information on the Bootson property. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about costs. Um, you know, when you start hitting hitting the wallet and the city taxpayers, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I, I feel a little tapped out. <laughs> and when I um, <laughs> and when I got my um, assessment of my property that it has been lowered, um, mm -hmm. I'm feeling even more tapped out. Yes. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the Bootson property. Um, you know, it sounds like a wonderful thing, and I think it was a wonderful gift that Mrs. Bootson gifted to the city, gifted to all of the taxpayers and all of the citizens, this 54 acres um, designed to add recreation space. And, and add, future generations. And, and for future, future generations, mm -hmm. right, to add. I don't think her intention was ever to take away from another property park yeah. um, so to add to our space but um, looking at the Rettler Corporation's numbers I took a look at those numbers and got them from the city uh, so Aurora and the school district have all seen these numbers um, Rettler Corporation is an architectural firm landscaping mm -hmm. firm who's professionally does this and they did a preliminary cost estimate for the amount of money that Aurora is donating um, to this project um, for $3.1 million, if we as taxpayers do not add an additional $2.5 million at a minimum, because this was a preliminary cost, so once you get in there, who knows what you're going to find. But um, And most of the work is just on leveling the land. But at, we will have to put in $2.5 million, or somebody will, because if we don't, all we're going to get is five grass fields, not tournament grade style. Um, we're going to get parking, and we may, if we have any money left over, get some work walking trails. They may be dirt for a while, <laughs> but um, if we don't contribute an additional $2.5 million, we will have no concessions, no restrooms, we'll have no shelters that were promised, we'll have no signage, we'll have no lighting anywhere, which was promised, uh, no pavement structures for the shelters. Um, the tournament grade fields, what that takes is that's quite a bit of extra money actually. It's mm -hmm. six additional $64,000 a field that were not put in the budget. Um, that That's drainage and topsoil and that makes them higher quality fields. It's not Lambeau field, but it's it's makes them nicer and that's what makes them tournament style. Um, and there'll be no landscaping. So I can tell you with five fields with some grass on it, it's worse than we, way, way worse than we have now that we currently own. Mm -hmm. We own it, and it's, free and, and it's paid and it's for, paid free and clear. Mm -hmm. um, it, it'll be way worse, and there's no way we're going to attract tournaments with that. Mm -hmm. Well, what's, what's happened is common to every governmental agency, be it city, <coughs> county, state, or federal. The people proposing these things always underestimate the cost. They're always, what do they call them, cost overruns? Mm -hmm. uh, always cost overruns, and they always overestimate the amount of revenue. So, for example, uh, with the marina, it costs more than it was supposed to cost, and the revenue has been substantially less, and we're still pumping money into supporting the marina. The uh, same thing happened with the destruction of the Boston stores. It costs more than, than was anticipated, than was proposed. They're saying that this will generate $200,000 of taxes. The St. Nicholas Hospital Same Day Surgery Center generates $75,000 in taxes. So will it? Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But it's a nice number to throw out there. You have to also consider the upkeep on the boots and property and the maintenance. Uh, you came up with comparables from Appleton, Melissa. And there, for 15 fields, they're spending about a half a million dollars a year. That, so if we have five fields, we're talking $150,000, $160,000 a year for maintenance. If we have 10 fields, then we're talking $300,000, $320,000 a year. And that's going to have to come out of the general budget in, uh, in Sheboygan. 
and right now we can't pay for fixing roads uh, and infrastructure. The other thing that that they're looking at when they build the uh, the phase one project is eight hundred thousand dollars from the room tax. Uh, last year we had six hundred and sixty thousand uh, dollars in room tax. The thirty percent of that that you can spend uh, by the city uh, that doesn't go into tourism would have been one hundred ninety eight thousand. So four years of that room tax can take care of that eight hundred thousand. However. That's money that had been in the general fund before, so that's coming out of some other pot also. Uh, and then you'll have the maintenance besides. So it, it seems to me that it's going to be very, very difficult to ever improve it because the, the organizations that would use it primarily, the football and soccer groups in town, uh, can't make ends meet now. So they're not going to be able to generate enough income to build another two and a half million dollars worth of structures and pay for three hundred thousand dollars a year in maintenance. But none of those numbers have been put out there. Right. And the city has mm -hmm. committed us, the taxpayers, to maintain it until the football and soccer clubs can. And I believe, uh, Juan, you've you mentioned in the past, you know, the clubs have come to the city sometimes. Oh, we, Sheboygan has a long history of dealing with private clubs, uh, becoming elite clubs and so forth. So when they say we're going to allow everybody to play, sometimes they don't. Be, they become elite. But beyond that, they also come and go very frequently. Mm. Uh, parents uh, uh, divorce, parents move, kids grow up, people lose interest. Uh, the fundraising doesn't come out the way it should be. So forever the city has been picking up that slack. And if they can't pick up the slack, and I really believe they're not going to be able to in this situation, everything goes to, to flop. And that's, we're going to have a, a, a blight area over there. That's basically what we're going to have. Uh, another good example beyond the Boston store and, and the marina is the, uh, the museum that just closed down. Mm -hmm. That was one not long ago that a private entity, not a club, but more or less the same thing, decided they, were, they wanted that, they bought it, the city held, now they're out of business because they can't afford to keep it. So it, it just goes on and on and on. And for the city to rely on those kinds of, of, of uh, promises, because that's all they are, it's a promise. There's nothing legally binding them to, to, to do what they say they're going to do. Sure. So for the city to rely on those kinds of promises, it's, it's just incredible. It's just incredible. On I don't behalf they of should the taxpayers. Sure. Yeah. We're the ones yeah. going to pick up the We're side. the ones that are going to pick your, up the Your house value is going to go even further down. Your taxes are going to go up. Okay. And somebody needs to explain mm -hmm. that to me like a three-year-old because I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> so what can we do? What can mm -hmm. we do? Well, that's an interesting point. I, I, I really do think that there is a solution to all this. Uh, you know, if, if that $5.1 million that Aurora is saying is a donation um, to the city um, mm -hmm. for building in the city um, and not just to build over the field of dreams, if they take that $5.1 million and they donate that and we don't build and they don't build over the field dreams they build somewhere else they either build mm -hmm. on one of the properties that they have or better yet buy another commercial property from us we have some more for sale mm -hmm. um, buy a, that and don't build over the field of dreams they could take that full 5.1 million dollars and put it towards the boots and property they could actually do phase one for 5.1 million dollars and they'd have a little bit of maintenance money left over as well and they could have the tournament grade style fields and we could still have the Field of Dreams where the North High is practicing and we still need those fields. Um, my understanding from the soccer clubs uh, is that we need additional space or could use additional space. So if we're taking away from the Field of Dreams, we're not adding additional soccer space. Um, I do have a question of why, why it was turned into soccer and football and why nobody else got to decide that the boots and property that was gifted to the city um, why we didn't get to decide what it was, but we can talk about that in just a minute when I finish my point. But mm -hmm. so, if they gift the 5.1 million dollars to the Boots and Property, let's say that the city does want that, the taxpayers, mm -hmm. um, then they could build Aurora could build somewhere else. They could expand, you know, their services, hopefully on the south side and, and reach all of our community uh, and and uh, the county as well. And then we could still have the Field of Dreams. We could have the Boots and Property. Aurora could still build. I mean, that really is a win-win-win for our kids, for the community, for the neighborhoods. And the um, moms would have their and gardens. And we'd still have their we'd gardens. Stay, we wouldn't, yeah, we'd save, mm -hmm. you know, on all of that movement that we're spending money on, we just don't need to move anything. And we can still have the Boots and Development development and Aurora could still have a new surgery center. Mm -hmm. So and as a as community members, you can call your alderman, call your alder persons. 
Yeah. Email them, call them, let them know what you think of this. Let them know that you are against the rezone. You can show up to the Common Council meeting April 8th at 6 p.m. That's in the common, it's in the council chambers. There will be a public hearing where anyone can speak on this issue. You do not have to pre-register. Just show up. You'll get three minutes to talk about this. You can simply say, I'm against the rezone. Vote, ag vote against it. But many of these aldermen have already made up their minds, so it's important to call now before that meeting. While it'll be, it'll be important to speak in, in, uh, publicly and openly, mm -hmm. I think it's also important to call the aldermen as many times as you can to see if we can try to convince them not to rezone that property because a lot of them have already made up their minds because Aurora mm -hmm. secretly, and they, they like to do things in secret, has been pounding on these aldermen so that they can mm -hmm. vote to rezone. Meeting mm -hmm. with them one-on-one. -on -one. Meeting with them one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've been debating this issue for uh, almost a month outside the council chambers where it should be, and they've been debating it in the offices of Aurora individually. Now, where that constitutes a walk and quorum is, is yet to be found out, but what they've done is they met with each one individually to come up with a predetermined outcome. So let your important. voices be heard. It's important to remember who the older people represent. Yes. And do they represent Aurora? No. They represent the people of Sheboygan. The people of Sheboygan need to be heard. Yes. And, and here's, the, here's the other officials. important point, which is a little, a, little, a little callous, but once Aurora gets what they want, if they get what they want, which I don't hope they don't get what they want, but if they get what they want, they're just going to be done with all these people. Yeah. They'll never mm -hmm. hear from Aurora That's again. Right. They'll never exactly. call them. They'll never say hi to them. They, they just, they'll be done with them. And unless they understand that, that all they're doing now is using them to get what, what they, they want. want, and then when they're done, they'll be discarded. Right, mm -hmm. and the taxpayers will be left. And hopefully <laughs> if they do that, the, pe the, tax the taxpayers and the voters will discard them too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, and the other point to bring up would be the April 7th elections. April 7th election is a school board coming up. Mm -hmm. And, and there's, uh, there's five people, I believe, that are running. It's Peter Madden, Mary Beth Martin, and Dennis Schmidler, and Barb Tosinski, and Ryan Berg. Well, Barb Tosinski has a long history of trying to destroy parks, and she's at it again. Mm -hmm. And Ryan Berg, I don't know much about him, but he also voted in the unanimous vote. So I think what, what, the, what the team has is, is, uh, talked about is supporting Peter Madden, Mary Beth Martin, and Dennis Schmidler. And those are the people I think, it's new blood. Uh, Barb, for example, has been there, I can't even years. count, 19, 19, 19, 19 years. years. That's too long. Mm -hmm. That's too long. We, we, we thank her for her service, but it's too long. She needs to move on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's, it's important that we let our elected officials know that they can't just do what they want. They are elected officials. That they're they're, they're serving us, mm -hmm. not Aurora, not the largest private employer in Wisconsin. They serve us. They should be responsible. Well, and Scott Lewandowski is running for an aldermanic yes. seat against, against, Thiel? against Bill Thiel. Mm -hmm. And while I have a lot of respect for Bill for having recused himself from the yes. vote, that was the appropriate mm -hmm. thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we should give, uh, he, he was in on the planning of the whole thing, and I think we should give Scott Lewandowski a chance. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Good. All right. So, we, uh, community members, what we're asking, uh, if you believe that we shouldn't rezone this park, because that's one of the ways that we're going to stop this now. Now that our elected officials at the school board uh, pass this behind closed doors, um, before we could stop them and organize and find out what was going on, they passed it. So the, the way to, st or they sold it, the property. So the way to stop this right now is to tell your older persons no to rezoning the Field of Dreams. Right. It is a residential property. Um, we mm -hmm. want to keep it a park and keep it residential. It is a park according to the city plan. Um, it's not over yet. It's not over okay. yet. And also join us at the rally. We're having a rally uh, at, at Aurora. Um, the clinic. At the Aurora clinic. clinic on Memorial Drive on Saturday at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. This Saturday. 10 to 1 this, this Saturday. Saturday. So join us at the rally. And also uh, come to the Common Council meeting on April 8th. Call your aldermen and uh, save the field of dreams. All right. Thank, thank you, Thank you for listening. Thanks. Yep.